When I was a boy, about nine or ten, I wanted a BB gun. My parents said no. Have you seen the movie A Christmas Story? You know, the one that plays 24 hours a day at Christmas time? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Well, that was me. All except for the boy in the movie actually did get a BB gun. I got a bow and arrow instead, and that's a whole nother story. I want to tell you a little bit where I was, where I was born. I lived in rural Michigan, farmland. The blocks were one mile square. The closest house was a half a mile away. Fields as far as you can see. Have you ever looked out an airplane and seen the checkerboards below? That's where I lived. Now my friend Chuck, who lived a mile from me, he had a BB gun. So this one day I rode my bike to his house and we were outside playing with his BB gun. His parents were not at home. There was this farmer's shed that was on the corner by Chuck's house, and somehow we decided to shoot at one of the windows. It made a small hole, and then another one, and another one. But the glass wouldn't break. So one of us picked up a rock and threw it at the window, and it broke. Crash! That was exciting. Now this shed had a lot of windows, you know, the little square ones all through the panes. We continued to pick up rocks and we broke every window in that shed. Then we see this man come running after us across the field and, we, and he was screaming at us, so we ran. We ran to Chuck's house and we hid in his basement until he quit pounding on the door. Then I got on my bike and I rode home. You know, the next day, this shiny blue state police car pulled into our driveway. The policeman got out of the car and he asked to speak to my parents. My mother was home. Have you ever heard the say, saying, wait until your father gets home? At this point, I felt my life was over. In today's society, I would have been arrested. But my father and Chuck's father, they made arrangements with the owner of the shed that they would replace the broken windows. So on a Saturday, they went and worked and replaced all the broken glass. I will never forget how angry my father was when he came home to see what we had done with all those cuts and band-aids on his fingers. Now comes the punishment. My mother said if my father would have laid his hands on me, he probably would have, well, you get the idea. So no TV for a month. I had to do the dishes and all the other chores. Not many dishwashers in the 60s, but my mother had three of them. Their names were Daryl, Brad, and Ann. So I get punished, and my brother and sister love me for it because they don't have to do chores for a month. Good for them and bad for me. Oh, I also had to pay for all the glass. What seems to be really ironic is, is that I had just finished working for another local farmer for 50 cents an hour, walking behind a tractor that was pulling this large trailer, and what was I picking up? Rocks. I was punished for my actions, and rightly so, because I had been very bad. But what about Job from the Old Testament lesson? Had he done anything wrong? His friends kept telling him that he was being punished because he had to have done something wrong. Otherwise, why would he have lost all his possessions, his children, and he was covered in sores? Job maintained his righteousness and kept asking God why. And finally, God answered him. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of a storm. He said, Who is that that obscures my plan with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. You've got to love God's sar sarcasm. Surely you know. 
My employees tell me that I am one of the most sarcastic people that they've ever known. You know why that is? Because I know so much. I've been in the automotive business for 48 years. I have knowledge that they do not possess. So when they ask me a question that I think they should understand and know that should be obvious to them, I give them a sarcastic answer. God is omniscient. He knows everything. So he answers Job sarcastically, surely you know. At this point, Job realizes the answer to his question. He isn't God. He cannot do the things that God has done and never will. He has no right to ask why. He does not know God's plan. We are not God. He is the creator. And he cannot, and we cannot, and will not do the things that our God has done and will do for us. Another story, when I was 19, I was a member of my collegiate wrestling team. I was in great physical shape. I worked out every day. I could do pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, sprints, you name it, I could do it, and a lot of them. I wrestled at 142 pounds. Just picture me 80 pounds ago. I was fast and powerful. I had a grip like a vice. I was afraid of no one or anything. I was fearless. In fact, I had this black light poster, if you can remember black light posters. My mother had me keep it in the back of my closet. It was a picture of a beast walking out of a valley. And the caption said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, because I am the meanest son of a gun in the valley. That was me, except for the mean part. I felt like I had that kind of power. There was another wrestler on a team. His name was Kevin. He wrestled one weight class below me at 134 pounds. Every day we worked out together. We learned from each other. We came, became more skillful and stronger. We were powerful and felt we were invincible. When we would go on road trips overnight for meets or tournaments, Kevin and I were roommates. We grew very close. Kevin was like a brother to me. He was a great kid. Always had a smile on his face. And he had this really cool walk with kind of a hop in his step. Everyone liked him. This one day, another local college, they came to our campus to work out with us. We had this large wrestling room with the mats on the floor. And we paired up with the, the members of that other school. And Kevin was on all fours, and his opponent was beside him with his arm around his waist, hanging on as Kevin was trying to escape. I will never forget what happened next. I heard Kevin yell, Ah! as he bolted upwards. And then he fell limp to the mat. Kevin died that day in front of my eyes. And there was nothing I could do to save him. Not all my strength and all my power was useless. Kevin was gone in an instant from a brain aneurysm. I didn't go to class for three weeks. I was devastated and I had the same question as Job for God. Why? God seems to be reclusive. We have a God that is hidden from us. He appears in a storm to Job. Appears as a burning bush to Moses. He appears as a voice from the heavens, a voice from the clouds, and in a vision and in dreams. We know he's there, but we have doubts due to our own expectations of life. I did not expect Kevin to die that day, and Job did not expect to lose everything he had. God couldn't save Kevin, or wouldn't save Kevin, and didn't save Kevin. Our God is a loving God, and he wouldn't let my sister's 17-year-old granddaughter die in an automobile accident. 
on an icy road going to school. But it happened. We don't expect or anticipate these things to happen to good Christian people and we wonder how this can be or why. And God says to Job, can you bind the chains of Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you? Here we are. More sarcasm. Here we are. I have not, cannot, and will not be able to raise the dead. The answer is the same. We are not God. God is omnipotent. He is almighty. Only he has the power. Only he knows what will happen in our lives and why. We have not done anything in our lives that classifies us with the same power of God. His power is awesome. I did not want to be feared. I wanted to be loved. But I enjoyed being able to be a protector. We should fear God because of his power. It's so incomprehensible. But the good news is he has our back. Our power is, his power is on our side. We have a father in heaven that loves us. Love him back. He protects us from the power of the evil one. When Jesus died on the cross, it seems like God was hidden from us. He wasn't going to, couldn't, wouldn't, and didn't save Jesus from death on the cross. And why didn't Jesus save himself? He had the power. He demonstrated that power in all his miracles. According to the Gospel of Matthew, he got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Jesus says God couldn't, wouldn't, and didn't save himself. Wasn't he God? Yes, he was God. And he had the knowledge to know what his father's plan was. In order to fill that plan, he had to die. When Jesus rises, our God who was hidden in the obscurity of the tomb is revealed to us through Christ's resurrection. God promises us the Messiah. He sent his son to us to die on the cross and atone for our sins. The resurrection is the ultimate victory over death. The God that hadn't had, the God that didn't, did. God spoke to Job with questions that remind him that he is not God. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the does bear their fawn? Do you give the horse its strength or close its neck with a flowing mane? God also speaks to us in the Bible and asks us those same questions that remind us that we are not God either. When we hear or read God's word in times of tragedy, times when God seems hidden, God is revealed to us. My friend Jay, who was dying of pancreatic cancer, in his last day in hospice, while he was laying in the bed, I read him passages out of the Bible. And verses out of the hymnal is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I don't know who was comforted more, me or him. The God who wouldn't will. Growing up, my father had rules. Break the rules and you will be punished. Our father in heaven has rules too. They're called the Ten Commandments. Break those rules and there is punishment. But that punishment has already been accomplished by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He took the punishment for us. We ask God for forgiveness and our sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. God's grace is given to us freely. We do, need, we do not need to ask God why. We just need to believe that God has a plan for all of us. God is omnipresent. He is with each and every one of us every day. Jesus said, I am with you until the end of the age. 
we participate in Holy Communion and partake in the body and blood of Christ, we do this to remember Jesus and his promise to us for everlasting life. And when we leave this world, the God that is, the creator, will lift us up to be with him. All praise and glory be to God our Father. Amen.